Many people think that all HEPA filters filter the same, and many people also think that all HEPA air purifiers perform at the same levels as well, just because they see the word HEPA associated with the units. Unfortunately, this is absolutely not the case. So today, we're going to explore why not all HEPA filters are the same and why not all HEPA air purifiers filter at the same levels. I will provide 13 reasons why I think over 90% of the HEPA air purifiers on the market don't actually perform at a HEPA level. And there is a surprise finding towards the end with one of the more popular HEPA filters, which provides beyond a shadow of a doubt that not all HEPA air purifiers filter at a HEPA level. And I ran into that evidence by accident. So let's get into it. Number one, no independent body is required to test or verify the HEPA claim. Due to its high efficiency, reliability, and proven track record, HEPA technology has become the industry standard for particulate filtration in critical environments such as laboratories and hospital operating rooms. Therefore, most so-called HEPA filters are never even tested. There is no requirement that household air purifiers are tested to meet HEPA standards. Recognizing the great marketing potential of the term HEPA, many manufacturers use the term HEPA to project a high performance image onto their room air purifiers. The problem is that there are no regulations regarding the use of HEPA in testing and labeling products. In other words, no independent body is required to test or verify the HEPA claim. Therefore, most so-called HEPA filters are never even tested. Number two, many manufacturers use the term HEPA to project a high performance image onto their room air purifiers. To confuse consumers further, there are more and more types of HEPA claims entering the market. Some of the HEPA claims include HEPA type, HEPA like, HEPA style, and 99% HEPA, but they are all subpar versions of what truly constitutes a HEPA air filter and may never have been tested. Aside from doing your own testing, there's no way to know how efficient or inefficient a filter using one of these terms is. There are no regulations regarding the use of the term HEPA in testing and labeling products. The true HEPA claims are not required to be tested either. Again, true HEPA refers to HEPA filters that claim to capture 99.97 of particles down to 0.3 microns. True HEPA is a marketing term designed to assure customers that their HEPA filters actually stand up to HEPA standards. However, the use of this term is also not even regulated. Number three, even Wikipedia says some companies use a marketing term known as True HEPA to give consumers assurance that their air filters meet the HEPA standard although this term has no legal or scientific meaning. Now, I have told many people in the past that almost anyone can basically start an air purification company in their garage and strap a HEPA filter to a fan and market it as a HEPA air purifier, even without any significant third-party testing to back up the claim. The HEPA air purification industry is kind of like the Wild West in this regard. Many HEPA air purification manufacturers can take great liberties with their marketing and advertising, and they do. <laughs> Number four, also HEPA filters are somewhat fragile. So there's no guarantee a filter that passes HEPA standards will perform after manufacturing. Some, even many HEPA filters can get damaged in transit, but customers won't be able to know by merely looking at them. Number five, the quality of the HEPA fibers. Some so-called HEPA filters are made of ordinary synthetic fibers. Synthetic fiber media is known to be a far less dense structure and is much less efficient at trapping particles than media made of fiberglass or specially synthetic fibers but consumers won't typically recognize the difference. Number six, the efficiency of many air purifiers often decreases by up to 50% in just a few months of real world use. As more dust and debris accumulate on the filter and more and more dirty air escapes around the HEPA filter. However, most HEPA filter tests are done on brand new clean air filters, but their effectiveness can decrease dramatically after some real world use. So basically, all filter tests that go on for only 20 minutes or so on brand new clean filters are invalid for the real world after 20 minutes of real world use. It really makes sense if you think about it. The efficiency of many air purifiers with a HEPA filter decreases rapidly over time 
due to clogging. As the captured particles block the gaps between the HEPA filter fibers, the passage of air is increasingly restricted and the airflow rate of the device decreases significantly, which means that its efficiency decreases as well. For example, a study measured the loss of efficiency of an air purifier with a HEPA filter over time after 1500 hours of operation, which is equivalent to about two months of the unit running continuously 24 hours a day, the air purifier's efficiency at removing pollution from the equipped room was reduced by 50% which is crazy. 50% is a huge number after only two months. But the vast majority of all HEPA filters and HEPA air purifier tests do not test for the efficiency of the units over time. And really, that is the only thing that really matters. Who cares how the units perform with brand new clean filters for 20 minutes? What matters is how they perform in the coming weeks and months with debris accumulation, right? Number seven, many air purifier companies want the best CADR ratings they can get as it is a popular standardization in the United States. A very flawed standardization, in my opinion, if you saw my video on it. But nevertheless, many air purifier manufacturers will engineer, so to speak, their air purifiers to do well on the CADR test. And part of the CADR test rewards performance for having high CFMs. So some of the manufacturers will have a higher CFM metric than actually have their air purifier perform at a HEPA level. As we already know, most of the air purifiers will never go through stringent third-party testing for HEPA performance. So the manufacturer will just say their unit has a medical grade HEPA filter inside of it, and it has good CADR ratings, all the while it never actually performs at a HEPA level. But to many unsuspecting consumers, those two variables are going to weigh heavy in their decision to purchase an air purifier. Number eight, Aranzi, an American air purification manufacturer, states, more recently, some Chinese air purifiers have started to market their air filters as H13 or H14. This is quite aggressive for a consumer air purifier filter. The filter media may be H13. However, when pleated, is most likely E12 or E11. Achieving an H14 level for a consumer air purifier is not believable. It doesn't make sense since the pressure drop increases, which lowers the CADR. Here is a chart that shows that Aranzi is basically saying some of the Chinese-made air purifiers that have an H14 filter class in them probably don't even filter at a HEPA level. As they say, they probably filter at an E11 or E12 level, which is below HEPA. Again, HEPA being 99.97 at 0.3 microns. Is Aranzi just mindlessly bashing the competition or do they have a valid point? Well, I currently think they probably have a valid point on this issue. Number nine, EN 1822 is a European testing standardization for filters and it's considered more stringent than US HEPA filter tests. And some folks think the EN 1822 testing is the most stringent in the industry. Either way, some manufacturers seem to have figured out a way to have their HEPA solutions test more favorably with the EN 1822 tests. To increase the efficiency measure during the EN 1822 tests, some HEPA filters use an electrostatic treatment called electrics that disappears after a few hours or days of use. The drop in filtration rate over time can be very high. A German study on the CADR of an air purifier in real world conditions reports a four-fold decrease in the air purifier's efficiency depending on whether the filter is new or has lost its electrostatic treatment. And I have heard that this electrostatic hack technique can also work on the CADR ratings test as well to provide the air purifiers with better test scores. So it may actually work for both tests. So even when some air purifiers test really well in stringent tests like the EN1822, some of the manufacturers are gaming the system. So their filters perform better on the test than they will actually perform in the real world for consumers. Now, I'm down in Georgia. And where I'm from, son, we call that cheating. But maybe that's just me. Number 10, the DOE, 
Department of Energy HEPA filter failure rate. So the Department of Energy did a study on their HEPA filters and they found a 12% failure rate. These HEPA filters were tested at the manufacturer, then carefully shipped and installed by professional installers at each location. And then the filters were tested again after the installation for any leaks. And then the filters were tested every six months as well. And again, they found a 12% failure rate across the board on their HEPA filters. So if the DOE's HEPA filters that have a steel housing and are carefully manufactured and installed and tested by professionals, if they have a 12% failure rate, meaning leakage, what do I think the failure rate for a typical air purifier is that you buy from a store and have shipped to your home? Air purifiers, where the vast majority were never tested by the manufacturer when they came off the assembly line, Air purifiers with filters that don't have steel housing, but most often cardboard housing that's much easier to bend and enable tiny air currents for dirty air to get around the HEPA filters. Do I think the failure rate of a typical air purifier is going to be less than the Department of Energy's failure rate? With all their stringent testing, and I'm assuming superior manufacturing processes and quality control, no, of course not. I definitely think a store-bought, mass-produced air purifier will have much more of a chance of not performing at a HEPA level, of course, right? The DOE's HEPA filters reside in standalone type ducting that does not move. Store-bought air purifiers have been shipped and put on shelves, and there is some jostling that can occur to the filters and units in the transit journey. And it doesn't take much to create tiny gaps in filters that we cannot see with our eyes, for them to perform at less than a HEPA level. 11, manufacturing processes will have occasional mistakes. Some years ago, I worked for a company that manufactured a bypass oil purification solution, and we made filters that purified oil. We would connect these oil purifiers to many different types of engines. Most were 18-wheeler type truck engines, and these 18-wheelers cost up to about $100,000 each. So our company was small, but it had just gone public, and we had just received some financing from investors. I got into sales, and our sales process was basically dealing with trucking fleet managers with a large number of 18-wheelers, you know, around 1,000 or more trucks in their fleet, and we do a free 6 to 12-month test with our oil purifiers on two trucks to prove to the fleet managers that they could extend their oil drain intervals by at least four times. You see, we typically need to change oil not because it breaks down, but because oil gets dirty over time. And the company's bypass oil purifiers would clean the oil with a 100% cotton filter that would take all the contaminants out of the oil below one micron. And the oil purifiers also had a heating element, so they would also burn off all the condensation that would eventually get into the oil as well. So you could extend your oil drain intervals by at least four times more than usual. If you were changing your oil every 25,000 miles or 40,000 kilometers, you could then go 100,000 miles or 161,000 kilometers in between your oil changes. This saved the companies a ton of money and the units would basically pay for themselves within about 18 months, if I remember correctly. Well, the company spent a ton of money on salespeople traveling to different locations all around the country, getting permission to run these free tests and multiple large trucking fleets all over the country. The problem is that at some point in time, the company got some bad batches of cotton and the 100% cotton being used in the filters wasn't 100% cotton anymore, as it had some chemicals in it. And this caused some of the oil itself to burn in the trucks. So they found that the trucks had less oil in them over time, which obviously scared the fleet managers to death. This ruined multiple tests all around the country and ruined a year's worth of work. And it cost the company a ton of money. And that bypass oil purification company was ISO certified. So it wasn't like they were just winging things. They had quality control processes in place, right? So you can imagine if a company like that can make faulty filters, which are much more simplistic to make than HEPA filters, and they have the future of the entire company riding on those tests, and they still manufacture defective filters, you could imagine, especially with less expensive HEPA filters being manufactured and mass produced, who knows where in the world, and most are never even tested, that there will eventually be some manufacturing mistakes 
And not all of the HEPA filters are going to work at a HEPA level. To me, this is just common sense because I guess I worked at a manufacturer and I got to see this happen firsthand. So I understand this may not be as obvious to everyone. That was the oil purification industry. But even IQ Air admitted they received some bad carbon in the past and some customers could smell an odor coming from their units. And I consider IQ Air to be a high level manufacturer in the air purification industry. So you got to know if IQ Air can have some manufacturing issues with some suppliers and whatnot, and they've been in the manufacturing game for over 50 years, you got to realize these other air purification companies are going to eventually have some manufacturing issues at different times as well. It's not a question of if, but rather when and how often. But are they going to be honest about their flaws and mistakes like IQ Air was? I think typically not. And IQ Air actually owning up to the manufacturing mistake only improved their reputation in my eyes. I was very surprised when they admitted this and owned up to their mistake. Most manufacturers will try to hide their mistakes from the consumers for sure. That has been my experience. Now, one of the main differences between the two industries is with a bypass oil purification solution, the oil is being tested on a regular basis, like every month. So you know if there is a problem with the oil purification solution. However, with HEPA filters and HEPA air purifiers, you are just hoping your filters are actually working at a HEPA level because you can't really tell. And like I said, the vast majority are not even tested, right? Number 12, iRobot purchased Eris for over $70 million a few years ago. So if all the HEPA filters and all the HEPA air purifiers filtered at exactly the same levels, then why would iRobot purchase the Eris air purification company for over $70 million? iRobot was founded by three MIT graduates, and they are the leading robotic vacuum cleaner company in the entire world. And they owned 46% of the entire worldwide robotic vacuum cleaner market in the year 2020. And I think if all HEPA filters and all HEPA air purifiers all performed at exactly the same levels, then iRobot wouldn't have spent over $70 million dollars to acquire an air purification company with only 35 employees, and they probably could have easily made a HEPA solution all by themselves for much less money, right? I mean, they've been successfully making robotic vacuums for over 20 years, which sounds like rocket science compared to making HEPA air purifiers, right? Couldn't those geniuses at iRobot just get a couple of filters and hook up a couple of fans to them and boom, they're done. No, because it's not that simple, obviously. It is not easy to create an ear purifier that actually performs at a HEPA level, especially after it gets dirty with dust and debris and you try to run it on higher CFMs. One of Iris's founders is an MIT engineering grad and one would think their ear purifiers probably filter better than most all other HEPA solutions on the market if iRobot was willing to drop over $70 million on them, right? Of course, I mean, that just, that just sounds like common sense to me. And number 13, five different filters. And we have a little bit of a surprise with the Winix filter. Just look at these five air purification HEPA filters. Do we think they all work at the exact same level of filtration? Here's the IQ or Health Pro Plus HEPA filter, which is about five inches thick. And it's manufactured in Switzerland. Here is the Iris 3-in-1 filter, and it weighs about 12 pounds. Most of the weight is the carbon inside the cube. But as we can see, it has a few inches thick of HEPA material, and it is also manufactured in Switzerland. Here is the Austin Ear HealthMate HEPA filter, a large round cylinder that also possesses carbon, and it is handmade and American-made. Here is the Filter Monster third-party filter, which is supposed to be equivalent to the Austin Air HealthMate replacement filter. But it uses different HEPA material, and it uses different glues and adhesives, and it is manufactured in China, and very possibly manufactured by low-paid, low-skilled labor who may not seal the unit quite as well as Austin Air's trained staff, right? I mean, that may be true. It looks very similar to the Austin Air HealthMate manufacturer's filter, but do we think they will filter at exactly the same levels? Well, I emailed Filter Monster and I asked them, can you please tell me, number one, where this Filter Monster filter is manufactured? Number two, how it compares to the manufacturer's replacement filter? You know, any pros or cons? 
And number three, anything you would like to add? And Filter Monster emailed me back in a very timely manner. And I appreciate the quickness of the response from their customer service. And they said, hi, Doug, Filter Monster manufactures our filters in China. They are made of the same components as the Austin. So that sounds like it might be a good deal, right? You can pay $290 for a replacement filter made by the manufacturer in America, or you can pay $120 less and get the third-party Filter Monster Chinese-made replacement filter from Amazon and get it for only $170, which is about 42% less. So on the surface, this may seem like a really great deal, right? I mean, so many people simply think, all HEPA filters filter exactly the same, so I'll save a bunch of money. However, I did a little inspection of the two filters next to each other, and I found some measurable differences. A, for one thing, when I weighed both filters, the Austin Air Filter was 24 pounds and 8.8 .8 ounces, or about 11 kilograms. But the Filter Monster Filter was only 17 pounds and 12 ounces, or about 8 kilograms. So, there was about a seven pound or three kilogram difference in the weight of the two filters, which is about a 39% difference. So why is the Filter Monster filter so much lighter? Does it have less carbon in it, less steel or metal? Does it possess less quality, lighter HEPA material than the American made Austin Air HEPA material? I was actually very surprised at the differences in weight as I consider that to be a large difference. I think the two filters should weigh almost exactly the same, right? Because their dimensions are very similar. B, it looks like it's very possible that the Filter Monster filter doesn't have carbon filled to the top as we can see the white color of the filter a couple of inches down from the top of the unit. But the manufacturer's filter, Austin Air's filter, is dark in color from top to bottom. So I think the Filter Monster filter probably has less carbon in it and it is not filled completely from the top to the bottom and if that's true, then a large quantity of incoming dirty air, maybe even the majority of it, is going to push through the part of the filter missing the carbon. So I think the Filter Monster filter is probably not nearly as good as the actual manufacturer's filter for odors and VOCs, because the airflow will always travel the path of least resistance. And if the top of the filter has a gap that is missing carbon, then a lot of the air will simply flow through the HEPA portion at the top of the filter and not get any carbon absorption. So you won't get any VOC or odor removal for any of that air. C, another thing I noticed is that there were differences in the gaskets the two units used. The gaskets on the top of the filters were different in size. The Austin Airs filter gasket was about 11 inches or 30 centimeters from one side to the other, but the Filter Monster gasket was smaller and only about 10 inches or 25 centimeters from one side to the other. I'm not sure if that's a big deal. It's probably not a huge issue. But also, when I pressed down on the Austin Airs gasket, it was softer to the touch, while the Filter Monster gasket was harder to the touch. So the materials they make the gaskets with are not the same, and I don't believe they will both be as good at sealing the filters. The softer gasket by the manufacturer probably creates a better seal, I would think. And one of the most important differences I found was how the gaskets were connected by the two different brands. The Austin gasket joined at an angle, which I feel is superior to prevent air leakage around the filter. And you can see it in this picture here. It seems to be sealed pretty well. However, the Filter Monster gasket connection was just straight up and down. And you could already see a gap starting to form between the two connecting pieces of the gasket. This is not a good reliable seal in my opinion, and over time, I believe it has much more of a chance of leaking dirty air than the Austin Air Gasket. I would say Filter Monster kind of cuts some corners on the quality of the gasket versus the manufacturer's gasket and how they attach them to the filters. So the next question is, what other corners have they cut in quality with this filter? Why is the Chinese-made Monster Filter so much lighter than the American-made Austin Filter? Having less carbon makes a lot of sense when trying to figure out why it's so much lighter. I don't have all the answers,
but I paid good money for my Austin Air HealthMate air purifiers. And I've had two of them running 24 seven for over 16 years now. And I personally would not use a filter monster replacement filter in either of them based on my short evaluation of the two filters, as I don't trust its quality in comparison to the authentic manufacturer's filter. That is my current opinion based on what I see. So you can see that two filters made by two different manufacturers can look very similar to each other on the surface, but if we do just even a little bit of investigating, we can find what appears to be major quality differences. They are both supposed to be HEPA filters, and they are both supposed to filter at the same HEPA level. However, I highly doubt the Filter Monster replacement filter purifies as well as the Austin Air replacement filter. In a perfect world, they would have third-party testing data available that proves the filters work at the exact same levels of purification, right? Now that would be black and white data. But at this point, I think the more expensive replacement filter from the manufacturer is superior. So what do you know? Sometimes you do get what you pay for. So that is my current opinion on this. And here is the Winix 5500 HEPA filter, which is the least expensive of all of them and the thinnest at about one inch in thickness with the least amount of HEPA material as well. And we can see here, it is not sealed well in the air purifier. So as I take the filter out, we can see clumps of dust on the top of the HEPA filter, which means dust and debris is escaping around the HEPA filter and being blown into the air. There is visible dust all around the top of the HEPA filter. Here's a bunch of dust on the top right-hand corner. Here is dust accumulation on the top of the left-hand corner of the HEPA filter as well. And here's a bunch of dust running down the sides of the HEPA filter as well. So yes, some dirty air is absolutely positively 100% getting around this HEPA filter. No doubt about it. Here is a side view of the filter and you can see dust accumulation on the side and top of the frame. And like I was saying earlier, HEPA filters with cardboard housing frames are typically not nearly sealed as well as metal housing frame filters. And you can see with this HEPA filter, you can easily twist it like I did in this picture. So it would be nearly impossible for this filter frame to form a tight seal with the inside of the air purifier. You would expect many gaps for dirty air to escape around the filter. And that is exactly what we saw with all the dust on the sides of the filter frame. And here, I took my finger and ran it across the inside of the air purifier next to the bottom of the fan area. This space is behind the HEPA filter. And you can see my finger has a bunch of visible dust on it. So we 100% know dust and debris is getting past this HEPA filter. So we just easily proved that not all HEPA air purifiers filter at a HEPA level. And this Winix 5500 is a very popular HEPA air purifier, but as we can easily see, it definitely is not filtering at a HEPA level. The HEPA filter inside the air purifier, no matter how good it is, is not sealed well in the actual air purifier. And so the longer you run this air purifier, the dirtier the filters get and the worse its air purification performance will become as a larger percentage of dirty air will bypass the HEPA filter every day. And remember, we can only see particles that are 40 microns in diameter and larger. And for every dust particle we can actually see with our naked eyes, there are nine more smaller ones we cannot see. And when we see the dust on the sides of this HEPA filter's frame, we 100% know that there must be an abundance of smaller ultrafine particles, which are the most dangerous to our health that we cannot see and are also getting by this HEPA filter. This right here definitely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, proves the point that not all HEPA air purifiers work at a HEPA level. They do not all filter at a HEPA level. So click on this video here to learn about air purification seals Obviously, some HEPA filters are sealed better inside their air purifiers than others. You can't have a great performing air purifier without the HEPA filter being very well sealed on the inside. Or click on this video here to learn about some sketchy air purification marketing techniques some companies use to try to make their air purification solutions appear to be better than they actually are. Thank you.